Okay. Uh, good afternoon again. Today is uh, 19th of August 2020, and this is our third lecture uh, in the second chapter of the electric machines, which is the uh, magnetic circuit. Last time we have stopped by this element, which is the magnetizing curve. <coughs> Uh, what is the magnetizing curve? We said that the magnetizing curve describes the, th uh, the three phases or the three regions that uh, the material pass when it gets uh, magnetized. So let's, uh, let's go uh, to the board. The, it can be called a magnetizing curve or a BH curve because we plot, we plot uh, B in term of H, so the X axis is B, and the Y, uh, the X axis is H, and the Y axis is, is B. At the beginning, when uh, the magnetic field uh, is weak, we can increase, we said that we can increase H with the current, according to Ampere's law. We can increase uh, the, the field intensity with the current. So at the beginning, when we have a weak magnetic field, this one is B. Uh, okay, let's use a pen. This one is B and this one is H. Okay, at the beginning when we have a weak magnetic field, so when, when we increase H, B will increase proportionally and we call this linear region because B and H are increasing proportionally. We know that B is equals to mu times H. So, here, here uh, the domains which we talked about last time, the domains start to be aligned with the direction of the magnetic field. After that, the same, we call this first linear region. This one is a linear, linear region. After that, when more domains start aligned with the magnetic field, the variation of B uh, with respect to H become nonlinear. So we call this knee region, or we can call it uh, a nonlinear region or a knee region. Knee region because uh, the shape of the knee. In this phase, uh, the, the variation of B become nonlinear with respect to the variation of H. And the third phase, this one is a knee region, that's the second region. And the third phase is when the B will not get increased anymore. So even if we increase H, B will not get increased and we call this saturation, saturation region. Here when all the domains get aligned with uh, the direction of uh, the magnetic field. So let's see uh, another thing related to, to the magnetizing curve, which called uh, the hysteresis loop. Let's go back to the presentation. So this is concerning the uh, the magnetizing uh, curve. Now let's see the hysteresis loop. The hysteresis, which is a phenomenon that happened in the magnetic circuit. So the hysteresis loop. Okay, let's uh, zoom the presentation a bit. Okay, so we consider the magnetic circuit shown in the figure four. We have a core with, with a coil. When we feed this uh, core, so at the beginning, this core is uh, initially unmagnetized. So it's not magnetized at the beginning. So when we uh, feed this core at the beginning, so H, start increasing. Okay, so let's go to the board. Okay. So let's use the same, the same uh, graph. Okay, so at the beginning, when we increase H, so uh, B increasing. So until we get the saturation. So 
when we increase h from zero to uh, to the saturation this is as usual as we have seen this is we call this a magnetizing curve so this is the point is zero and we can call this point a okay now uh, when if we want to decrease the uh, magnetic field intensity so we want to omit this magnetizing so if the magnet uh, magnetic intensity now increases so of course be increase until we get the magnetizing curve now the second phase if we want to decrease uh, the magnetic field intensity like this if we want to decrease so to go back again to zero now in this case because of the characteristic of ferromagnetic material this curve we're gonna take another path so it not will uh, take the same path it will get and um, it will take another path like this until this point and we call this phenomenon hysteresis when i saw when i search about the meaning of hysteresis i didn't get uh, the meaning of the word itself but in arabic we can call it uh, okay so this is the phenomenon of hysteresis at the beginning we increase uh, the, uh, the magnetic field intensity from zero to saturation region then when we want to decrease the magnetic field intensity the curve will take a different path so and we can call this point b so at the point b h is zero but b it's not zero and we call this a residual or a remanent uh, magnetic field density so if even here we have cancelled the magnetic field intensity so we we cancelled the current so we will have a, re a remanent or a residual uh, magnetic field uh, are you seeing this yes yes okay good let's see uh, the presentation so the second phase number two if the magnetic field intensity is, in, is now decreased the ph curve will follow a different path from a to b so this irreversibility is called hysteresis which means simply that uh, the flux density lags behind uh, the field density so they they become not uh, out of phase so here as we said when h is zero the core will have a residual a residual or remanent flux density let's go back uh, to the board now if we want to cancel this if we want to cancel this uh, this remanent uh, field density or flux density at the point b we should reverse the polarity of the current so if we try to reverse the polarity of the current and uh, continue in the negative direction so the curve will take this path until this point so here we can call it a point c here we have uh, p has been cancelled but uh, h is in the uh, negative uh, direction and if we continue increasing the current in the negative direction we are gonna reach the saturation region in the in the other direction in the negative direction and we call this point d now uh, if we want to uh, if we want to reverse the polarity of the current here why 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 we reverse in the polarity we are taking the case when we have an alter uh, alternating power supply so the hysteresis happened when we have an ac uh, voltage or an ac power source that feed the magnetic circuit so when the polarity of the current because of course we have a sinusoidal source so when the when the polarity of the current get decree get uh, reverse it so the curve gonna take this 
path. Let's choose another color. So it's going to take from D to E. Then here we should reverse the polarity of the current, of course. Then it will now going to return to the point A. And we call this cycle a uh, hysteresis loop. So this, one, this cycle happened when the, the, the magnetic circuit is fed by an alternating source. At the beginning, from 0 to A, so this is the usual magnetizing curve, if, we, if, the, flux, uh, if the feed intensity H gets decreased because the current is decreasing, because we have an AC power source, the BH curve, this characteristic, will take another a different path. So when we get to zero, we will have a remnant or a residual a magnetic field. And when the current gets get reversed into the other direction, so we will have a magnetism in the other direction until we get the saturation in the second direction, of course. Also, when we, the, when we reverse the polarity again, when we reverse the polarity again, we will have also a remnant ma magnetic field or residual magnetic field in the, in the negative direction. And uh, because of the AC power supply, we're gonna have this hysteresis loop. Okay, so let's uh, conclude what we have uh, seen uh, this phenomenon. So this phenomenon happened in the ferromagnetic materials. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Let's repeat from the beginning. So, one, if the magnetic intensity is increasing uh, slowly, but, so by increasing the current, we're going to get the magnetizing curve from zero to the point A. This is the initial magnetizing curve. Now, if the magnetic intensity is now decreased because of the current of the power supply is AC, the BH curve will follow a different path from A to B. When we get to the point B, we will have H is zero, but we will have B residual or B remanent, which is the remanent, the magnetic field intensity that stay in the core, even the current is zero. Number four, uh, uh, now uh, if we uh, reverse the polarity of the current, because we have an AC power supply, the core will be magnetized in the opposite polarity. Let's continue. Now, by increasing the current in the negative uh, direction, we will result a saturation in the, in the other direction, of course. After that, with the reversing of the current, uh, with, with the reversing of, of the current, so the, the cycle will gonna return, repeat the loop again and again. And we can see this, an animated picture like here. here. This is the hysteresis cycle. So at the beginning, we get the magnetizing curve. With the reverse of the current, we're gonna have a residual residual magnetic field, then we have a saturation in the opposite polarity, then when the current gets reversed again, we will repeat the loop. And this phenomenon, as we said, it happened in the ferromagnetic materials. But the, you see this space, the space that's covered by the hysteresis loop is different from material to material. In the electric machines, always we try uh, to choose the materials that have a small, uh, small hysteresis loop in order to avoid losses. We are going to see in the next slide that the hysteresis cause a losses in the magnetic uh, in the electric machine. In other cases, the materials that use it to uh, to protect magnets, the permanent magnets, when they want to. Uh, Pro manufacture mag magnets, they choose materials that have a wide hysteresis loop. So this is concerning the hysteresis phenomenon that happened in the ferromagnetic materials. 
Let's see now the next slide, which is losses in the magnetic circuit. So the losses in the magnetic circuit uh, can be divided into two kind of losses. We have when the magnetic core is subjected by a time varying flux, which what, what does it mean time varying flux, which is which means that we have AC. So since the voltage and the current are varying, of course, the flux also uh, is varying. So when the magnetic core is subjected by a time varying flux, there are some energy losses in the, ma in the material called core iron losses or core losses. Okay, so the losses in the magnetic circuit, we call them iron losses or, uh, or we call them iron losses or uh, core losses. Okay, in general, the core losses are defined by the sum of hysteresis losses and the ED current losses. So we have two kinds of the losses in the magnetic circuit. We call these so losses. We call these losses uh, core losses in general, or iron losses. We can we can see the the, the two uh, the two uh, nomination. Uh, they are the same: core losses or iron losses, which are the losses in the magnetic circuit. These losses are divided to hysteresis losses and ED current losses. So according to this expression, PC, which is the core losses, equals to PH, which is the hysteresis losses, plus PE, which is the ED current losses. Now we are gonna see the expression of each one of these losses. So the hysteresis losses are losses caused by the continuous reversal, as we have seen, that infinite loop. Sorry, uh, uh, okay. So the, we said that the series loop is an infinite loop. Uh, okay, so we said that the hysteresis uh, loop is the infinite loop. So uh, losses will be caused in, uh, in this uh, magnetic circuit. So the hysteresis losses continues, but the, re the continuous river caused by the continuous reversal in the magnetic circuit. This series of losses has been determined experimentally by uh, Charles uh, Steinmetz. It's uh, German, I guess, according to his name. So this is exp the expression of the, the series losses. But to be honest, this expression has been determined experimentally. So it's not exact. Okay, so this expression has been determined with the, a number of trials or, or a number of experiments. So this expression has been determined experimentally by this one which called Charles P. Uh, Steinmetz. So pH equals to F square, which is the, uh, the frequency. So that's why we said that the, the, these hysteresis losses happened when we have an AC power supply because we have the frequency. So when the magnetic circuit is fed by a DC, we don't have a hysteresis. Okay, so pH equal to F square times times KH. KH is a constant depend on the ferromagnetic materials and the volume of the core. So KH is a given constant depend on the ferromagnetic material and the volume of the core. And the BM is the maximum flux density. So B max uh, power N. You see uh, the courses I give you uh, before, I forget this N, okay. I will, uh, I will try to update the file uh, uh, available in the e-learning uh, e uh, platform, okay. So the expression of the hysteresis losses, pH equals to F squared, which is the frequency times KH times B max uh, power to the power N. So N is the Steinmetz exponent, which is varied from 1.5 to 
to 2.5 depending on the material and we said this expression we don't have proof of this expression we just said this expression has been determined experimentally by uh, Steinmetz this is the expression of the hysteresis losses now let's see the eddy current losses firstly before see uh, the eddy current losses what 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 do me what what do we mean by the eddy current so when the flux density change rapidly in the core so according to the change of the flux a small current will get generated in the core okay on the surface of the core as you see here okay as you see here when we have a magnetic core according to the variation of the flux density a small current will get generated in the core so let's uh, go to the board Okay, so when we have, this is the surface of the core. In case of when we have a flux intensity, uh, density or flux variate, variate on this core, a current, a current will get generated in this core and we call them ED, ED which means shoulder woman. Okay, so they, the, those currents are uh, circular. Okay, have a circular path, and we call those uh, eddy current, like this. So they are a circular current that get induced in on the core, on the surface of the core. So those currents we're gonna uh, cause losses. So when the flux density change rapidly in the core, it induce a opposing a current called eddy current. And in other books, especially the French books. They call them Foucault uh, current. Foucault, it's the uh, name of a French uh, electrical engineer or something like this. So they call them uh, Foucault current, Le Courant Foucault. Or uh, we call them ED currents. So when the flux density changes rapidly the core, in the core, it's induced opposing current called ED current. So that circulates with E in the core, as shown in the figure number 6A. So here you see you see this piece of the magnetic core and you see those uh, those uh, circulating currents that get uh, induced in in this uh, core. So in order to decrease, in order to reduce or decrease those uh, eddy currents, we have uh, to make a laminated core. What the, what do we mean by laminated core? So we, we, we are not going to use the core as a single piece, a single piece of, uh, of the metal. Okay, so the core will be constructed from a compacted sheets. Okay, so this is the case A when we have AD, AD currents. So if we want to reduce the effect of the AD currents, this core must be divided into thin sheets like this. And between sheet and sheet, we have an uh, isolated uh, isolation material. So, if the core is composed by those compacted sheets, the current uh, in these sheets get reduced like this. Okay, so let's choose another color. So this is the ED current if we have a small sheet. So in this case, we can reduce those currents because those sheets are are isolated between uh, each other with material. So in order to reduce the eddy currents, we must, the magnetic core must be composed of a compacted sheets. So let's go back to the presentation. Yeah. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. Stuff. So we can see here, uh, the time is uh, running out. So, okay, no problem. 
we're gonna we're gonna restart it again so you can see here in this uh, in this figure that the core is laminated so it's composed by a compacted Uh, is composed by a uh, compacted sheets as you see here in this figure so this one is uh, the laminated core of uh, the transformer those are the compacted sheets let's uh, go to google to see some pictures of uh, laminated laminated core so you can are you seeing here google chrome hmm? uh, yes sir yes okay. So those are the, the compacted pieces that will be used to uh, construct the core. So those one, uh, the shape of E is for the transformer like this. Okay. And those are of the electric machine. They are circular. Okay. Those are for the electric machine. So always the starter of the electric machine of the main core of the transformer is composed uh, by those uh, sheets in order to reduce the AD carrots. Okay. Also, the expression of the AD current as uh, AD current losses as the hysteresis losses has been uh, determined experimentally. Okay, so it look like, looks like the previous. It's equal to PE, uh, PE which is the ED current losses equals to F uh, equals to F times KE, which is the, the constant. Uh, constant depend on the, okay, KE is a constant depend on the type of material and the type uh, and lamination thickness and B uh, max uh, square. So also these uh, expression has been determined experimentally. So now to conclude this, we have two types of losses that happened in the magnetic circuit. The AD current losses, the expression of the, uh, the, the hysteresis losses, the hysteresis we said is the phenomenon that happened in the magnetic circuit when we have uh, an alternating power source or an invariant time variant flux also, the AD currents, it's happened when we have uh, uh, time varying, time varying uh, flux or magnetic field. The, field, the history is losses pH equal to F square, uh, F square times KH, which is a constant, depends on the ferromagnetic material and the volume of the core, times B max to the power N. N is a constant, the Stein Metz uh, constant, which vary from 1.5 to 2.5, depending on the used material. Also, the, the ED current losses, we said that the ED current, that the current that get generated in the core because of the time varying uh, flux. And in order to reduce those currents, we should uh, construct our core from a compacted sheets. Okay, so the core, it's not a single piece, it's a compacted Sheets. We call this lamination. Yani, kilmat lamination in Arabic means shol as like the copybook. It's a compacted sheets. Okay. And the expression of the ED current losses is equal to PE equal F times KE, which is the constant depends on the type of the material and the lamination thickness times B max square. So all these constants, uh, this data should be given in case when we have exercise or something like this. Now let's see the last element in our chapter, which is the induced voltage and induced force. We have talked before at uh, the beginning when we started this module about the induced voltage. Because uh, how we can generate an AC uh, waveform. So here we have two cases uh, how we can have an induced voltage in the magnetic circuit. Okay, let's see. In AC electric machines and transformer, the voltage and the flux vary with time because the power supply is AC. Considering the flux in the magnetic core of the figure seven, 
Okay, so you see here the figure seven, we have a core with a coil. So if the, the, the flux is, uh, is uh, have an AC waveform or a sinus, sinusoidal waveform, the expression of the flux, of course, phi, uh, phi t equals to phi max uh, sinusoidal of omega t as the expression of uh, AC voltage or the AC current. According to Faraday's law, see here that Faraday's has have uh, has many laws. We have seen before the law of the uh, emotional uh, EMF, and this is also a Faraday's law. The Faraday's law states that the flux, if the flux passes through a coil of a voltage, uh, uh, through a coil, a voltage will be induced according to this expression. So E, which is the EMF or the voltage, equals to N, the number of turn, uh, the derivative times the derivative d phi over dt, which is the derivative of the current. So wh wh what we can deduce according the, to this expression. So the ex this expression is correct only when we have an AC flux. Okay. Why we use uh, an alternative current? We, not we who use the, the alternative uh, alternative currents. We study this case when we have an AC machines because the AC the electric machines the, uh, the AC we have DC machines and we have AC. Okay, we are gonna talk about this later. Sorry. Okay. When we have uh, an AC machine, we study this case, uh, we study the, the alternative currents in case when we have an AC machine. That's why we use an alternative uh, current. So this expression of the EMF N equals to d phi over dt, because we have a derivative. If, if phi is constant in case of DC, this, this expression gonna be zero. So this expression only corrects when we have an alternating Current. So Faraday's law states if a flux passes through the coil, so if flux passes through a coil, a voltage will be induced according to this expression. The EMF equals to N times d phi over dt. So when we derivate this expression, of course, the expression of the flux is a phi max sine uh, sine omega t. So its derivative is phi max omega cosine omega t. The derivative of the sine is cosine. And also we can replace the AMF with its expression E t equals to E max, which is the peak value cosine omega t. Then, uh, then we can take, uh, we can omit here uh, or cosine omega t with cosine omega t from uh, both sides. We omit this cosine omega t with cosine omega t. We get E max equal to N phi max 2 pi f. So omega is the equal to 2 pi f. Also, E max equals to square root of two times E RMS, which is the RMS value of the voltage. So we have less uh, than one minute and maybe this uh, meeting get interrupted. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, okay, it's it's a voltage. It's, uh, it's our choice to use it cosine or uh, sine here to simplify, we take it as a cosine, okay. Maybe it can be cosine, okay. Okay, so uh, as I said, maybe this inter meeting gonna interrupt it. We are gonna just uh, enter to the same link. Okay, so E max equals to square root of two times, uh, times, uh, times E RMS equals to N phi max two pi F, then, 